Good, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome uh, to CES, to this conversation on Europe. Uh, ETB strategies for de-demonizing de fascism. I'm my name is Jandu Zubritsky. I'm the William H. Sewell uh, Jr. Collegiate Professor of Sociology uh, and the Director um, for, of the Center for European Studies. I'm, I'm chuckling because I always mess up the my, my new title. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new title, so I have a hard time with that. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, to welcome you today and to welcome the speaker, uh, Sabina Rodriga, who's uh, a respected, uh, much admired scholar, historian, who comes to us uh, this semester from uh, L'Ecole des Hautes Etudes en Sciences Sociales in Paris, or the, the Higher School of Social Sciences in Paris. And the University of Michigan has a, a unique program, exchange program with that institution um, that started uh, with the Department of, of History, um, in which one uh, faculty professor uh, visits Ann Arbor, and one of ours goes uh, to Paris for, depending on their availability, from six weeks to a full semester. Um, that exchange over time has been expanded to other units, uh, first to sociology and most recently to the Department of Anthropology. Uh, the II, the International Institute, is also a partner in that exchange, contributing funds for that, um, which allowed it to flourish. And uh, I would say about five years ago, also we, we extended it to graduate students. So our graduate students can go and work with professors um, at uh, the HSS. And um, students from Paris come, and they come on a regular basis. Uh, we have one or two a year coming to Ann Arbor. So we're very pleased to have uh, Professor Luiga with us as part of that exchange, and she will be here until mid-April. Um, so I encourage you, if you want to uh, meet with her, uh, to contact her. And uh, it's a really a wonderful program that's very rich for our students and uh, faculty alike. Um, professor Doriga is hosted this year in the Department of History. Uh, she's a professor of history, as I said, at uh, Le HSS in Paris. She's also the editor of the journal Passé Futur, or uh, in the plural, so Pasts and Futures. And she's chair of the Festival of Social Sciences uh, that's called uh, Aller Savoir, or okay, I need help here on how to translate. Go learn. Uh, go learn. Go, go learn. learn. Right. <laughs> yes. um, and a, a, a journey into utopias. Her research focuses on the relationships between history and biography, the construction of historical time, and the public uses of the past. She held for several years a very important uh, seminar and with an associated uh, website where you could find all sorts of uh, uh, past conferences and interesting publications on the various political uses in the present of the past, to which I contributed to but way back when. Um, and uh, her publications in, uh, include, and actually, I, I can list them uh, for the French speakers here, but Une histoire inquiète, Les historiens et le tournant linguistique avec Jacques Revel, uh, published with uh, Seuil Gallimard in 2022, so the most recent. Uh, le Petit X, so that would be the historians and the linguistic turn. Um, le Petit X de la bibliographie à l'histoire, so the small x, or this tiny n, we might say, actually a very small sample from biography to history, published in 2010. Uh, Soldat, a laboratoire disciplinaire, l'armée piémontaise au 18 siècle, so soldiers, a disciplinary uh, experiment uh, on the Piedmont uh, army in the 18th century published by uh, Belles Lettres in 2007, and then again, uh, something more uh, about historiography, the experience, historiographic, so historiographic uh, experience, published by Le HSS in 2016 with uh, Litti and others. Um, she also published uh, 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 lectures uh, about Paul Ricard that are uh, well known, published uh, also 
in collaboration with others in 2006. So extremely well-published scholars and um, we're very pleased today that she will be speaking about things that concern us all. Today's lecture is about uh, fascism in Italy um, and we're we're eager to hear what you have to say on strategies for de-demonizing fascism, uh, but also to understand fascism and the different different fascisms that exist, and um, so that we can perhaps make sense of the ones we are facing here um, in the U.S. Um, so please join me in welcoming Sydney. Okay. <coughs> First, uh, I would like to thank you, Genevieve, and the Center for this invitation. I'm very happy to discuss with you, and I apologize for my English. Please forgive me for errors I might, I might make. I hope that my slide will help you better understand my lecture. I am by no means a specialist of fascism, uh, however, uh, I do deal with public users of the past. More precisely, I founded uh, the review Passé Futur, uh, dedicated to this issue. And uh, in uh, 2020, uh, we published uh, a number titled Echoes of Fascism. And I wrote an article about uh, how certain fascist visions have been uh, remobilized in the Italian uh, public uh, debate. Today I wish to address uh, how in Italy uh, fascist uh, references have become more frequent yet by stealth. Uh, before tackling uh, the political situation today, I will first uh, remind two historical key fe features on the Italian political uh, context. <coughs> the first historical uh, feature is a constitutional consensus. At the end of the Second World War, the Italian Republic was founded on principles uh, related to the, the res resistance, the liberation of, uh, from Nazi fascism, and the anti-fascist uh, constitution. Anti-fascism underpins the constitutional consensus to which adhered all the political parties involved in drawing up the 1948 constitution. This consensus excluded movement which did not share the anti-fascist values at the core of the constitution itself, such as the Movimento Sociale Italiano and the Partito Monarchico. The institutional narrative suggested a direct line of dissent running from the anti-fascism of the 20s to, res to the resistance movement born in 1943. It displayed an image of a mass anti-fascism, the resistance in which in actuality only a small minority of Italian actively took part was presented as a struggle for the liberation fought by the entire people against the Nazi fascist invaders. This narrative obscured the widespread consent that fascism earned among large sectors of the Italian society between 1922 and 1943. The second uh, historical key feature is the persistence of the fascism. First of all, a large section of the Italian population 
1946 voted in defense of the monarchy and viewed the new republican constitution negatively and remained reluctant or quite indifferent towards democracy. In addition, the fascists did not disappear overnight. As soon as war ended, some of them founded the Movimento Sociale Italiano with a political platform inspired by the Charter of Verona drawn up during the first conference of the Republican Fascist Party in November 1943. Over the following decades, uh, the Movimento Sociale Italiano alternated between a, a parliamentary uh, alliance with the Democrazia Cristiana and political violence. Some of its activists, like those from other far-right movements, were involved in a subversive policy based on the strategy of tension that is a series of uh, terrorist attacks seeking to create a state of a widespread fear. Still in 1982, the leader of the Movimento Sociale Italiano, Giorgio Armirante, said, fascism is here, and it is no paleofascism, but a young and enduring fascism. Among Italians, there has always been a powerful, everlasting, silenced disposition which never supported anti-fascism and has continued to encourage resorting to authoritarian options. This preoccupation about the persistence of fascism were echoed by many politicians and intellectuals. Ah, sorry. In 1945, the Prime Minister Ferruccio Parri, a former res resistance member, uh, spoke of the large parafascist army, the obese underbelly of Italy's history. He declared, there is a rising tide of discontent against the government, against the political parties system, and this shouldn't astonish us, for it is natural, physiological to the Italian situation. There is so much misery and so much pain and so much anguish and such a widespread state of insecurity. There are also those who are disappointed, disturbed, and the maverick. And one should also take into account the spirit of resentment and revenge. The jurist uh, Piero Calamandre wrote in 1952, as a political order, fascism is over. We, don't know that, we, we do know that its external structure, its pillars made of cardboard and fake ancient arches will never return. But the subterranean spirit endures. It s circulates and winds around and brews. It fuels other robberies, encourages other instances of arrogance, give rise to other forms of oppression. Uh, ten years later, addressing a conference of his party, Aldo Moro, a prominent Christian Democrat, confirmed this intuition of an enduring fascism. He said, we must bolster our vigilance and our resistance precisely because the scale of the fascist danger to topple our institution does not count only with votes of or parliamentary seats. And it is equally true that it does not reside solely with the Movimento Sociale Italiano. We are very well aware and they've already stated before that the root of fascism is deeply rooted in the social body of the nation. This quotation by Moro highlights two crucial points. First, neo-fascism was not a marginal phenomenon but an integral part of the balance of power which on several occasions 
has found its way to significantly affect the political life of the country. Even if rarely voiced, this phenomenon is very present in society and exerts a strong, a strong influence over electoral, political and power equilibrium. The historian Francesco Biscione defined this attitude uh, as sommerso in reference to lavoro sommerso that correspond to the informal labor and economy. Secondly, the Democrazia Cristiana has been extremely clever in managing this sommerso. But in the 90s, when mass parties underwent a profound crisis, this sommerso or underground inclination has turned to new political forces or more precisely symbolic figures. First among these iconic figures is Silvio Berlusconi. Then Matteo Salvini, the leader of the Lega Nord, emerged. Currently, the new iconic figure is embodied by Giorgia Meloni and her party Fratelli d'Italia. These figures have always viewed the fascist experience with indulgence, not to say complacency. In this respect, we can distinguish at least three strategies for claiming the fascist legacy, but by denying that it is fascism. First, the representation of fascism as an operetta dictatorship. Second, anti-anti-fascism. And the third, the game of hide and seek with fascism. I will briefly broach the first two aspects, drawing on the various historical studies available on the topic. I shall, uh, I shall then discuss the third aspect at greater length. Drawing on the political speeches of their leaders, I highlight some differences between the two main right-wing <coughs> parties, the Lega and the Fratelli d'Italia. In the post-war period, fascism was represented as more comical than tragic, a sort of histrionic farce of collective simulation played for 20 years by Italians under a slightly authoritarian autocracy until the day when it was perverted by Nazi Germany, which injected racism and anti-Semitism and led the regime down to its path of perdition. This consolidating legend mitigates the country's adhesion to fascism According to this narrative, Italians embraced fascism more out of artlessness than a real ideological conviction. They thus differed from German for their being human. Additionally, uh, Mussolini's regime is said to have had nothing in common with those of Hitler and Stalin. As uh, historian Emilio Gentile sarcastically observes, being rooted in nothing, fascism has uh, allegedly vanished and left no legacy other than the memory of an experience which had been more burlesque than tragic, where Italians played their part as unaware victims. The project of uh, defascizing fascism made a forceful comeback after 1989, with the end of the so-called First Rep Republic. Within uh, a, a few years followed the fall of, uh, of uh, uh, the Berlin Wall, several of the Italian parties involved in uh, combating fascism collapsed the Partito Comunista was uh, transformed, new political movements arose, above all the Lega e Forza Italia, and Forza Italia. 
in our case, what matters most is the transformation of the Movimento Sociale Italiano. In 1988, Gianfranco Fini was elected as a leader of the party. During his time as a leader, he endorsed the Movimento Sociale Italiano's role as recipient of Mussolini's legacy uh, with a, a number of notorious uh, statesmen. But over the following years, Silvio Berlusconi helped bring the Finnish party back into the mainstream. In 1994, he formed his first coalition with the Lega Nord and the Movimento Sociale Italiano. Fini gradually began to shift his party away from its neo-fascist ideology to a more traditional conservative political agenda to the point of mutate the Movimento Sociale Italiano into the Alleanza Nazionale. The reshaping of the Movimento Sociale Italiano entailed two correlated operations. First, on the one, Fini distanced himself from his past, declaring that fascism had been the ultimate evil of the 20th century and defining the racial laws, an error that turned into horror. On the other hand, as historian Pier Giorgio Zunino put it, anti-fascism was framed as the infamy of the Italian history. The resistance was evoked primarily for the arbitrary execution <coughs> and extra-legal purges carried out after the defeat of the Nazis. And more generally, the liberation movement was presented as a sort of anti-democratic movement guilty of mass murders on behalf of the Soviet Union. In particular, the Feuerwehr massacres by Marshal Tito Yugoslav partisan was the focus of an intense media campaign that neglected to mention the ferocious repression unleashed against the Yugoslav resistance by fascism. These massacres were likened to the Nazis' extermination of the Jews. In addition, deeds of fascist and partisan were placed on an equal footing. In this manner, Fini rejected anti-fascism as a political value. I will not deny, sorry, I don't remember. No. I will not, I will not deny that anti-fascism was historical an essential stage for the values of democracy, but the endeavor to de promote anti-fascism as a value per se is a left-wing endeavor. What was at stake for Fini was to substitute the fascism, anti-fascism opposition with another opposition, the totalitarianism against democracy. And in Fini's views, fascism was not totalitarianism. This update Volgate around fascism was taken up by other two. Silvio Berlusconi and his party displayed their indifference, not to say hostility, towards commemoration of the liberation of Italy from the fascist regime. They sought in turn to present a tweaked image of the regime. In 2003, in a long interview with the British magazine The Spectator, Berlusconi declared that Mussolini never killed anyone. At the same time, figure of fascism started to be celebrated, such as Giovanni, the philosopher Giovanni Gentili and, incredible but true, Marshal Rodolfo Graziani, who was convicted for committing crimes against humanity in Libya and Ethiopia. This situation has worsened in the very last few years with the ascent to power of the radical right. In the European election of 2019, Salvini's Lega garnered 34% uh, of the votes 
to which we need to add the 6% obtained by other far-right parties. At the end of, uh, of the 2022, the right coalition led by Meloni has won an absolute majority of seats in the Italian Parliament. In this regard, it is important to briefly recall the main characteristic of these two parties. The Lega was established in 1989 as a federation of six regional parties from North, northern Italy. At the beginning, Lega advocated the transformation of Italy from a unitary to a federal state, fiscal federalism, uh, greater regional autonomy, especially for northern regions. When Matteo Salvini rose to become the leader of the party, he toned down the federalist dimension and glorified the nationalist inspiration. He also built up ever closer ties with the neo-fascist groups laying explicit claim to the legacy of the fascism. Fratelli d'Italia was founded by Meloni in December 2012 in opposition to Gianfranco Fini's plan to fashion a conservative right-leaning movement fully compatible with the values of the Italian Constitution. This, uh, this uh, uh, alliance between the Lega and Fratelli d'Italia is based on a set of common uh, themes. A xenophobic policy accusing migrants of invading the country, spreading criminality and pursuing a plan of ethnic substitution, denouncing the global financial system, often via anti-Semitic statements against George Soros, extolling the nation presented as a victim, a mystifying rhetoric grounded in the idea of inverted racism, advocating that the traditional family is based on a mother and a father, reasserting the importance of the basic unit of society against the attacks which threaten the nature of marriage and enforce the gender ideology last defending religious identity. Um, as a consequence of the coming to power of the right-wing coalition, in the last years in Italy it has become fashionable to stand up for fascism. First of all, there are the neo-fascist demonstrations, commemorative marches to Mussolini's birthplace, neo-Nazi Facebook profiles, tweets praising the regime, fascist slogan dubbed on walls, racist anthems in sports stadium, and concert by identity rock bands. As you can see on the slide, what is new is a widespread and apparently banal use of the fascist symbols, cakes bearing the face of Adolf Hitler, cappuccinos with, fa with a swastika, jokes about uh, Anna Frank, uh, pizza with Nazi symbols, a statuette of Hitler in an activity scene at Naples, fascist calendars, and so on. Here there is a list and here you can uh, see a swastika design sketched uh, in a field in the countryside of the Piemonte. These few scattered uh, examples show that nowadays in Italy the use of fascist symbols is not lim limited to a few radicals. Fascism is a reference for people from various socio-economic backgrounds for a variety of purposes. Alongside those expressing nostalgia for the fascist regime, there are scores of all other people attracted more or less superficially by various chunks of fascism, 
racism, xenophobia, worship of a strong men leader, contempt for culture and the representative democracy, and the myth of sovereignty, Italian first. Some justify their prize of Mussolini and even of Hitler on the grounds of humor while all invoke freedom of opinion. The case of Punta, Can Punta Canna Beach in the uh, Venetian, Venetian uh, Lagoon is emblematic. In uh, uh, 2017, a newspaper revealed that Gianna Scar Gianni Scarpa, the manager of the public bus, was broadcasting racist messages and praise of fascism. You can see some examples here. And uh, uh, the problem is many customer, uh, many customer of the public bus are normal, normal people, middle class individuals. On being questioned by the press, they declared they were not interested in politics and had chosen this beach because it was clean and appealing. Most of them advocated a form of tolerance. Anyone is entitled to their own beliefs. And the manager was a pleasant man prone to wise cracks. After the article was published, the prefect of Venice ordered that Scarpa's license to manage the beach be withdrawn. But the story didn't f did not finish there. The former manager never stopped to go to the bath. With the consent of the new manager, he playfully talked the tourist into giving the fascist salute and singing Facetta Nera, the soundtrack to the Abyssinia campaign. Here is uh, Gianni Scarpa, and here you can uh, see the, the tourist on the beach uh, with the maillot de bain, with the uh, 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 okay. Confronted with uh, such uh, signals, right-wing parties play hide-and-seek within fascism. They had developed a dual communication strategy in which they deploy fascist symbols and uh, references, while at the same time denying the existence of fascism. However, between the Liga and Fratelli d'Italia, small differences regarding this strategy do exist. Matteo Salvini uses expression, expression dear to Mussolini, he posts photos of himself in military gear. He praises the fascist uh, period uh, in the name of freedom of expression. He said, it is obvious, obvious that under Mussolini many things were done and the pension system was introduced. Of course, Russia laws and persecution were one of the craziest, cra craziest things in the history. But are we allowed to recall that swamps were drained at the time? At the same time, Lega Nord deploys what one might call a rhetoric according to which the fascism does not exist. In 2019, the message became obsessional. Here are a few statements. There are no extremists, racists, or fascists. Italy is divided between the hard-working folks and those who want the ghost of the past to be put on trial. The fact that there is someone who <coughs> recalls the past, in my opinion, is devoid of political meaning. Talking about fascism um, no longer makes sense. There are no fascists in Italy, but I defend millions of Italians who are proud to be Italian, who demand that our history and our culture be respected. 
I'm not a fascist. Uh, I'm Italian. I want people to be able to do, do business as they wish in this country, and I don't want ideas of the past to be put on trial. Giorgia Meloni and the leaders of the Fratelli d'Italia to claim that the fascism doesn't exist in order to retain the new electors. Meloni declared, there is no and there has never been a problem with fascism in this country. Italians have other problems. We have no relationship with the fascism, which ended 70 years ago, and I was born in 1977. The time of test has been over for the Italian right for a long time. Rehashing the past is unfor unforgivable and stupid. Fascism is long gone. However, unlike the, Le the, the Lega, which has no score to settle with history, Meloni's party cannot and will not dismiss the past. Fratelli d'Italia uh, see itself as a heir to the Italian uh, Movimento Sociale Italiano. Meloni states so clearly and proudly, there is nothing in my life or in the history of the right wing movement I represent of which I should be ashamed or for which I should apologize. In 2021, she published an autobiography. It's a mix of autobiography and political thought. She recounts family and personal anecdotes to celebrate her experience as an underdog. She loves a lot this expression. Her absent communist father, obesity issues, her working class neighborhood, persecuted by the system. She praises pop, pop culture, Michael Jackson and Italian hits. She offers fragment of a political reflection with many quotations from the British conservative philosopher uh, Roger Scruton. She constantly um, reclaims the far right past. I have taken uh, over from a 70 year old history. I didn't want to betray the ideals of a 70 year old history. We haven't forgotten where we come from. Of course, Fratelli d'Italia is not the old Movimento Sociale Italiano. Meanwhile, there has been the collapse of the mass political si uh, system, which mediated popular demands, 20 years of Berlusconi, the advent of social networks, which has transformed the communication and the transmission of history. The international context has changed, and Meloni may succeed in repositioning her party within the conservative right. What's more, um, the Movimento Sociale Italiano and Fratelli d'Italia don't share the same historical references. Whereas the first had always remained linked to the history of the fascist regime, for Meloni the fundamental period for her political engagement was the 70s. As she writes in her autobiography, I know all the stories of the young people sacrificed in the 70s on the altar of anti-fascism. Anti, anti there is no doubt that this cultural and physical violence provoked my strong rebellion against political anti-fascism. In her first speech to Parliament, she devoted a passage to innocent young people who were beaten to death in the darkest year of criminalization and political violence in the name of militant anti-fascism. Moreover, Meloni, Meloni um, 
and, uh, generation had been nourished by the culture of uh, heroic fantasy, particularly the work of Tolkien. In 2002, she recalls the specific cultural dimension of the young right-wing militants for joining the movement before it was driven by ideology. She adds, our Bible is the Lord of the Rings. One of the organizers of the party's Hobbit summer camps recalled, by resorting to the characters created by Tolkien's imagination, which reflect reality very well, we wanted to demonstrate and confirm that we certainly weren't born recently, that we have deep roots, but we also wanted to say that we didn't like this world as it was. And so, looking to the future, we evoked from Tolkien tales those images that feed our imagination and satisfy our thirst of, for values. Yes, we too are inhabitants of the mythical Middle Earth. We too have to contend with the dragons, orcs, and other evil characters. Fairy tales, illusion, no, this is real. The famous uh, Tolkien's tri uh, trilogy opens up uh, the possibility of a clear division between <coughs> good and evil, between tradition and modernity, between, between spiritual and material values. The symbol of uh, uh, Middle Earth, the Hobbits, the Shire, the Ring of Power, were used to construct a new mythology. They became a generational mortals for young people who dreamed of a hierarchical supportive community. Even today, the heroic fantasy imaginary remains an important emotional reminder of the militant community as, evi as evidenced by the fact that the first major exhibition organized by the Meloni government in Rome was dedicated to Tolkien. On this occasion, uh, Minister of Fratelli d'Italia presented themselves as a cultural descendants of the writers. They view him as their source of inspiration to their struggles against what they label as conformism and massification. It's uh, in, in, the photo of Meloni during the exhibition. Uh, unlike uh, uh, the deep roots, eh, it's a quotation of, uh, of Tolkien, deep roots uh, are not reached by, by the frost. Unlike the League, Meloni's party cannot and will not re renounce uh, its past, but they tell it in their own terms in an extremely selective manner. Here are some cases in point. The, uh, the history according to Meloni. The persecution of the Jews is framed as an incomprehensible and uh, ahistorical event that happened to take in Italy during the fascism by chance, as it were, not because of the fascism, but during the fascism. The Russian laws and the decision to declare war are denounced, but that's it, not a word about the march on Rome, the fierce brutality against political opponents, the special court for political offenses, the secret police, the war crime in Libya, Ethiopia, Somalia, Greece, Albania, Spain, and Yugoslavia. The Fosser de Atine massacre was perpetrated, according to Meloni, by the Nazi against Italians, not a word on the fact that the victims were Jews and partisans. April um, 25, the day of liberation from Nazism, marked the end of the Second World War and the beginning of a civil war that split families and led to extrajudicial uh, execution. 
Italy has been a victim of the Second World War. The foibe are likened to the extermination of the Jews. Far from being the founding principle of the Republic, anti-fascism is the violence performed by the left during the years of lead in the 70s. The neo-fascists of that period were the victims of the domineering violence of the communist terrorists. Not a word about the physical attacks on left-wing militants. The bombing at Bologna station in August 1980, which killed 85 people, was a faceless bloodbath despite the investigation clearly established the responsibility of neo-fascists. In Europe, democracy was not restored in 1945 with the defeat of Nazi Germany and fascist Italy, but only in 1989 following the collapse of the uh, Soviet bloc. Not a word about the connection between the Italian far right and the Spanish, Portuguese and Greek dictatorship. In short, Meloni and the other leaders of the Fratelli d'Italia are framing the past to suit their agenda by means of omissions and ambiguities. The result is that uh, is they are shaping a past that has never existed. It's a time to conclude. One may criticize overuse of the term fascism, starting with Pierpaolo Pasolini's notion of consumption fascism, or Felix Guattari's uh, idea of molecular fascism. One may doubt the usefulness of the category of eternal fascism proposed by Umberto Eco, and one may regret certain oversimplification. One may also be dissatisfied by anti-fascist rhetoric and disturbed by the habit of employing fascist as an indiscriminate term of abuse. But this does not mean that fascism is over. Instead of taking up the reassuring motto that history does not repeat itself, it is worth remembering the sentence of Mark Twain, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Of course, history does not repeat itself under exact same terms. Of course, historical conditions today differ from those of the post-First World War. Of course, Italy is not a totalitarian dictatorship, but the death of the fascist regime did not automatically imply the death of a fascist ideology. The mix that contributed to the advent of fascism are currently re-emerging and being reworked. Above all, the forces calling for the normalization of the regime never gave in and are now increasingly thriving. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have about 20 minutes for Question. Do you want me to take the questions for you? Yes, you like. Yes. Hi. I would like to thank you very much for this presentation. It was very interesting and quite shocking, I would say. Uh, and I have a question, like a PhD research. Uh, I have PhD research in journalism, and actually I'm uh, studying about media reality. And on what, uh, on your opinion, what is the role of media in this de demonization of fascism? Because you mentioned before that there were some articles in media that like denied fascism in Italy, and I would like to hear more about your opinion of this media impact. Uh, the, the, the newspaper are very split, so there are some newspapers uh, 
controlled by uh, the right uh, and uh, is agree with uh, this uh, uh, rhetoric uh, with the idea of freedom uh, uh, freedom of uh, speech uh, this is the idea of the but uh, I think that the real problem, the most important problem is a network, uh, is a Facebook, uh, is a internet. Uh, internet uh, uh, allowed to faire surgir, to resurface, resurface a lot of uh, bad uh, things. Thank you, um, Sabina, for this really interesting talk. I, I, I think I, the question that I have is, um, on the one hand, your argument seems to indicate that the survival of fascism in Italy after the fall of the regime in 1945 says something about Italian society itself, um, and then um, that is that that somehow there is a kind of survival of attitudes of, of um, and and I'm uh, I guess I have one question about that and then the, the which is it, are there are there clear social groups that are rallying to the cause is it can you see can you see the kind of survival of fascism as the expression of, of, of particular disaffected groups, the working class or the middle class, or, or, um, or may perhaps regional differences? We know the Liga the, the, was, was, you know, was a, originally a, a regional movement. Um, because much of the latter part of your talk took um, the point, yeah, the, the stuff on, on Tolkien and stuff, which is hysterical, if not frightening. <laughs> um, um, is, it shows a kind of a, a set of cultural references that are not necessarily attached to social identities, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and if the power is a, a set of cultural references, a, a refusal to condemn the past, which has been kind of separated from ideology, they've they've shifted, you know, they've covered up. Um, how should we then? How, what do we see as the conclusion? If there, you know, are, are there are, are there these identifiable social groups that we can see as supporting these political movements, or is it simply diffuse ideas in the culture that resonate for reasons that have something to do with social media? You know, and all the things that we that, 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 that are similar in other places. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very important and very difficult question. I think that uh, th there is a problem because uh, in, uh, in Italy there was a lack of uh, trials. Uh, it's to say we didn't have uh, uh, Nuremberg, uh, uh, so th there was a, 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 a amnesty. No reckoning, yeah, no, no reckoning or no, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, after the war, the, the, the more important uh, uh, communist, uh, Palmiro Togliatti, decided to give uh, amnesty and this uh, lack. Uh, why? Because, uh, because of the Cold War. And so it was because uh, um, no, 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 no trials against Nazism um, uh, was also a possibility to don't make a trial against fascists. So a lot of uh, a lot of reason. Uh, and uh, so th th there was a sort of uh, 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 fascism disappear uh, uh, after after the war, and uh, immediately there was a, a, a new party, uh, Partito Qualunquista, of uh, a man uh, called uh, Giannini, and uh, the idea was. Uh, the past is not important. Uh, we want uh, uh, we want uh, watch the future, uh, and so th there is a, a lack of uh, of working. Uh, 
from this uh, point of view, Italy is very different from Germany and from Japan. And other thing, there is, a, I, I told this, uh, the stra I, I quoted the strategy of tension because there, there were also a lot of uh, alliance uh, and uh, complicity between uh, the right, uh, the neo-fascist groups and uh, the uh, secret service uh, in Italy. And uh, we have a lot of, uh, of uh, problems. So during the, 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 during the 70s, uh, uh, th there was a sort of, uh, of uh, alliance uh, and complicity very, very strong. Which, uh, and so I think uh, it, it, for me, it's very uh, uh, unbelievable to, to think that uh, uh, someone who, Aldo Moro said this very explicitly. And uh, if you want the, the, the Democrazia Cristiana used the neo-fascist, but the, 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 uh, the men, the political, were very, very uh, awareness of, uh, of the problem. Can I do a quick follow-up? Just a quick follow-up? Because it seems to me the, the, the argument there about privileges Shows that the social body that is the yes. kind of repository of fascism, it's actually elites, right? The, 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 the elites in the business community, right, who backed Berlusconi in the 90s, right? Yes, but, uh, uh, now we, I, I cannot uh, afford this problem, but I think that there is a, a problem about uh, Mezzogiorno, the south of Italy, okay? where uh, the, the country was very, very, is, yet now, is very, there are a lot of poor, and uh, if you want, uh, th this was a sort of uh, deposit of uh, uh, vote for uh, the nationalist, for the um, clientele. Can, can we say clientelism? Clientelism, patronage. So I think that the problem of the South in Italy is, is, uh, is uh, very, very linked to this. Uh, also because, uh, also for another reason, uh, the South were uh, liberated by the, uh, by the American English very early, and they didn't leave uh, the tragedy of the uh, resistance, uh, of the war, uh, of the massacre uh, of, uh, by Nazis, uh, and so on. Julia and Julia. <laughs> Julia and Julia. Julia. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, presentation. And um, I think I, I really like this, this last part of the, the bringing in, uh, in Mezzogiorno e la questione meridionale, uh, because it is, it, is, it is something that oftentimes we forget when we're talking about mm. Italy as a nation and, you know, the kind of like the development of political ideology split and the fact that a lot of this underbelly of this sommerso yeah. uh, also has to do with, the, um, you know, un uh, unhappiness and frustrations within the Italian South, which has incredibly high levels of unemployment. And you know, so that's also another question, which kind of brings me to my question for you, which is a twofold, because uh, um, I was really interested in uh, hearing a, a little bit more um, about the second point that you first lay out uh, with the Democrazia Cristiana and the fact that they're cleverly, they're, they're able to, under, to manage the sommerso. And then the second part of the question is, what, what kind of force, what kind of political force should we be seeing in Italy today that is able to manage, again, this, this sommerso that is not so much sum, sommerso anymore? Because something else you also mentioned, which mm -hmm. I think is also important, is that you said about the, the Gianni Scarpa mm -hmm. event. You, you, you said, those are normal middle class yeah. people, right? And, and so, and I love that, it's exactly, 
the trivialization of symbols, of aesthetics that we associate specifically to the party, but that are almost like losing their last, like their, their, their political, yeah. you know, balance. Um, and so I wonder, right, what kind of political force then? Because Democrazia Cristiana was such an institution, and it was able to, to keep to, it. To you keep know, even even yeah. if you know through. You know, yes. ways that might not have been super legal through, you know, alliances that, you know, Aldo Moro clearly didn't condone. Um, so I wonder, right, what would you, what do you see in terms of like? I don't know, and I think that uh, I'm not able to, <laughs> to, unfortunately, I'm not mm -hmm. able to, to answer to uh, your question. Uh, I, I don't know if you have uh, some ideas about this. Uh, it seems to me that the problem uh, is not uh, only Italian from this point of view, it's general. It's to say that the left uh, is, not, uh, uh, is not able to answer to this, uh, to, to, to this, uh, uh, to this uh, problem mm. of justice uh, uh, and so on. And uh, the, the left in Italy now is perceived uh, as a, uh, an elite party. Uh, here too. Here too, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, in France uh, too. Everywhere. Yeah. So there is a, 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 a general problem. Second uh, Julia. Yeah. Second <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting. Um, I actually have two questions. Um, the first one would be, um, do you think this strategy of de demonization of um, the fascism uh, helped <coughs> uh, Georgia Meloni to access power, or actually it's her fascist legacy that was really used to I mean, that attracted people, actually. Mm -hmm. And my second question would be to, what is your, um, I would like to have your opinion regarding the fact that now Georgia Meloni uh, is in power and she didn't, I mean, she she has a very nationalist and far right politics, of course, but um, regarding Europe, for example, she she's like always in Brussels and she meets with many partners. So she doesn't have this fascist discourse. And do you think this is just opportunistic or there's just a, a shift in her uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. I begin from the second. Uh, I think that uh, it's opportunistic. But I think also that uh, sometimes uh, opportunistic strategy could become, uh, could uh, uh, could move something. For example, I think that, uh, personally, it's my opinion, I think that uh, Fini begin, began the transformation of the Movimento Social Italiano into Alleanza Nazionale because of, of opportunism. But I think that uh, after some years, uh, he believed uh, really in this passage. It's to say that sometimes perhaps uh, also opportunism could, uh, could do something of a positive. It's my hope. Uh, but uh, Giorgia Meloni, she, she's not uh, as uh, Fini. For this, she, it's very... The, the first, uh, the night of the election, she offered the victory to the ancient, to Giorgio Almirante. For this reason, I say that she cannot renounce to her history, to the history of the party. With some changes, it's to say that for her, the season of the 70s is more important than the, 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 the period of the fascist regime. And this, uh, uh, for because of the 70s, this idea talking uh, uh, and so on. I, I think that only in Italy talking is uh, is uh, a thinker of the uh, neo-fascist. Because in other countries, uh, is a, is a writer of uh, hippies of. Uh, but in Italy, he became a, a, a writer of the, of the 
right of the neo fascists but you know in poland i have talked to fascist people <laughs> and their talking is also uh, they are i mean they admire him also for those reasons so it's funny i mean yes. you can see there are some mm -hmm. things i guess but thank you Rebecca. <coughs> This is a little bit of a deviation, so I'll keep it very short, and, and maybe it's only partly a question. But when you say this is a problem in many places in addition mm -hmm. to Italy, I'm very struck with the parallel with the way that the concept of white supremacy has evolved in the United States from being a term that would have been thought to be essentially polemical, rhetorical, derogatory, to accuse someone of being white supremacist, and then so many of its elements creeping back in. So I'm struck that when Paxton was interviewed once about origins of fascism, he said, well, the Ku Klux Klan would be really the first brown shirts. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he was being perfectly serious. I mean, he was really talking about the way in which an ideology gets mobilized and turned mm -hmm. into a violent movement that, that seizes power, which, which the Klan essentially did in, in 1870, or across the 1870s. So I'm just struck with the way that things we thought of as taboo back in. So it's barely a question, but it's just a, a parallel. No, no, and the fact I, that I, I thank you very much. I think the that the, the comparison is very important. And uh, I think that uh, b perhaps Berlusconi inspired uh, Trump, <laughs> but uh, Trump uh, uh, inspired a lot uh, Giorgia Meloni and uh, Salvini. And uh, before the, the war in Ukraine, uh, the, the, the right uh, parties in Italy were very, very close to, 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 to Republican uh, and uh, to Russia and yeah. to the Republican. Now there is a difference between uh, Meloni and Salvini. Salvini yesterday has uh, uh, congratulate uh, Putin, uh, but uh, uh, Meloni not, because she, from this point of view, she's very intelligent, and so she is uh, for the NATO, for, uh, for uh, Ukraine, and so on. But uh, the, also because Salvini was paid by, by Putin. He, he received uh, some, uh, some money from uh, Russia, so. It's just, as you know, yesterday, Donald Trump, in addition to the many other things he said, said immigrants are not really people, they're animals. Mm -hmm. and, and so the, the inhibition about <coughs> statements that are just unmistakably uh, Yes, but uh, the, you, you are right. The problem is that there is also a form of tolerance, uh, uh, very widespread in Italy. Uh, I, I don't remember how many years ago, but uh, seven, I think, uh, um, a black uh, woman uh, deputy in Italy was uh, appelled uh, um, Sange. Yeah, she was Orango. Uh, Orango, from uh, a, a member of the Lega. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you, you, you say something, but uh, it's a, a sort of a humor. It's humor. It's a joke. It's a joke. We, there was politicians doing the same macaque, remember there was a, yeah. I mean that's, you have very similar things going on in the U.S. now in ways that are very disturbing, Poland too, so I think it's, it's very widespread. Yeah, I just want to add, I, I was worried more about another one quote from Trump a couple of days ago, he, he, he told about if if I uh, lost the uh, elective uh, election, uh, blood it blood. will be blood bloodbath. Blood. And you actually use this uh, term bloodbath uh, in, in your yes. presentation, so it's it's pretty like uh, maybe one uh, of the term from fascist vocabulary, probably I'm not sure, but maybe a, a specialist uh, can agree or uh, not with this. But my question uh, related to the um, uh, situation in, in Ukraine, the, the Russian aggression in Ukraine. So last uh, two years we actively use uh, on official level in uh, our legislation system in Ukraine and uh, also in um, academic sphere the term Russi Russism in Ukrainian, Russism, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, Russism in the English version. 
uh, from your perspective, how it's correct to use this uh, version of uh, fascism, maybe, but uh, in in the um, case of, of mm -hmm. Russia, is it correct? No, or not? I'm not. I'm yeah. not. Uh, per I'm not yeah. a, a specialist. Uh, perhaps Genevieve knows yeah. better than me the problem. I'm, I'm not uh, convinced by use of the term fascism about uh, Russia, because it seems to me that uh, why don't speak uh, of Stalin, of, uh, in this case, perhaps uh, the, the historical uh, references uh, are different, are not fascism. It seems to me that uh, in the case of Italy there is uh, something in the past of Italian uh, people with, uh, which is uh, now is present. I'm not too sure that for Russia the term fascist is very. Um, perhaps we can speak about uh, the the way of uh, the communism of the Tsarism. Because, there's a, strong, it's because there's a strong Russian nationalism uh. as opposed to Soviet. So. Uh, this is a, a good idea to find some uh, another term. We are not using fascism. Uh, so, yeah. so I, I don't know if you've read about or heard. This is uh, uh, Tim Snyder has written about that term also. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 So, Russism as a, a mixture of fascism and Russian nationalism, but it's less related to yeah. middle class, you know, politics. It doesn't go back to um, to World War II yeah. or to the interwar period. It's. it's well, just add to that. Oh, yeah. I, I won't say No, go add more to questions. this because that's related, and then there's one in. Yeah. Yeah. Just really quickly, I mean, uh, the way I explain it to my students, I always rely on Paxton actually in this, and I still think it's true today that when we're trying to debate on whether or not to use the term fascism to describe any particular movement, we have to first of all acknowledge that. Up until recently, maybe <laughs> um, there were only two regimes that were that that sort of embraced the term, right? Um, National Socialist regime in Germany and, and Italian fascism. But there were many groups in many different parts of the world that imitated parts of it: the costumes, the rhetoric, the, the, sh the black shirts, the brown shirts, right? That, um, and we don't know what those movements would have done if they had taken power. Some may have become like Hitler or Mussolini, but we don't know. Um, and the problem is now it's the, 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 the imitation factor has become global and instantaneous. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. the, the sharing of medieval pagan Tolkien-like ideology, fusing it with weird nationalist environmentalism and, and exaltation of forests and the division of the world into you know, forest people and mountain people and the, the racial, you know, that's, that's, real, that's, all, the, that's all over the, the extreme right. And it's a kind of global culture now. Um, and in some ways, fascism itself has been is a large market. Well, it's been overwhelmed by the diffusion of this this and easy act of of, of, of you know absor absorbing and imitating provocative rhetoric for short term political gain. It's not they're not really political movements in the sense that you know the black shirts were in the nineteen twenties. It's something else is happening. Yes, if I can add uh, things, because uh, and for, uh, from this point of your view. It's very interesting uh, because I think that the fascism, the historical fascism, uh, um, in comparison to the Germany, the Nazi Germany, fascism was an ideology very, very, um, with a, a strong uh, uh, um, syncretism. Mm -hmm. So fascism uh, was born with uh, something uh, uh, on the left, uh, yeah. futurist, uh, traditionalism, uh, the, the, the right. So uh, fa from this point of view, fascism uh, is very important today, I think, because uh, of this capacity of a fascism uh, to, to take together different chunks of things. And uh, now we are in this uh, situation. Sorry, you. Oh, sorry. I, I'm wondering about the taboos around the word itself. You said how the politicians are going to great lengths to deny 
being fascists? What is it about that word that they're objecting to? What is about to the word? Then? The word fascist that they don't like. I mean, if, is if why is swastikas that? are being carved into uh, hillsides and, and people are giving Nazi salutes, and you know, it seems like all those kinds of symbolic taboos have. But uh, uh, it's a very, st it's a strategy. It's to say that some of the people uh, who say that there is no problem of fascism. S some of these uh, have uh, the, um, the, the stat uh, statue, the statue of the Mussolini at home. Uh, yes, statues. Statues, statues uh, of the Mussolini the at home. But mm -hmm. they say that there is no problem of the fascism. So th there is a sort of uh, um, negation, uh, uh, but it's a strategical. They, 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 love, they, they are very uh, attached to fascism, but they say that it's not a problem. They don't want to say it out loud or don't want to say it in public. Or well, Donald Trump says, I'm the least racist person you'll ever meet. <laughs> so it's the same, it seems like it's the same thing. You do all the acts of racism, but the word okay. still has the power to discredit, and so you disavow the word. Yeah, yes. He also said, I mean, but I mean, you disavow the word. Yes, it the, the word disavow the mentioned. word. Yeah. I mean, there's, but, so Meloni, does she use the word fascist? Or she says, well, we have a long history. It's all euphemism. No, she doesn't right? to use it. We so have a long history. history 70, 70 years. years. <laughs> <laughs> this is around. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Um, <clears throat> when you, uh, cited how uh, fascism is more comical than tragic, the burlesque element. It, it reminded me of Adorno's statement of, about the fascist buffoon. And he was referencing uh, Charlie Chaplin in The Little Dictator. But when I first read that, it made me think that buffoonery is an original essential element in fascism. There was always a certain buffoonery and that comic element and Hitler yes, for example right. looks to us like a ridiculous pop and jay right amid all the SS you know, men masculine men um, but I wonder if that buffoonery served as a, a point of, a, of attraction and identification and now we see, as, as you said, this broad sharing of pieces of fascism. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly being shared here. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. But the appeal, I wonder if some fundamental part of the appeal is a certain buffoonery and comic element aligned with, of course, the violence and the hatred somehow. Yes, you are right. Perhaps also in the banalization, in the yeah. use uh, of uh, Hitler and Mussolini for the teenager uh, parties and so on. Yeah. There is uh, this yeah. idea, I joke, uh, yeah. is comic, uh, is uh, tragic uh, at the same time. Yeah. And uh, perhaps uh, also this, uh, it's not only now, but uh, in the fascism, uh, fascism uh, uh, historical fascism. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, from this point of view, sorry, the attitude of Silvio Berlusconi was ex uh, was exactly this. Yes. The buffoonish just for uh, as an element. And that's sorry. Trump too. And Trump, and Trump, and Trump, Trump too, Trump. of course. Yes. Berlusconi Trump. was. He even has a clown outfit. Yeah. Oh, clown. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I mean, know, it's the same. You're, you're right. Totally. I mean, so I'm curious because you talked a lot about the cultural symbols of fascism. But fascism also has an economic paradigm as well. And the interesting thing about Meloni is that as soon as she was elected, the first thing she did was cut the reddito cittadinanza. She cut welfare. She ran on expanding daycare, maternal care. She's done none of those things. And so I wonder 
if you can speak to why people why, accept well yeah I mean how much can there be uh, how much how how um, how durable can Meloni be if she fails to respond to any of the economic concerns that supposedly her fascist you know paradigm is supposed to solve or supposed to resolve I it's mean, my it's hope just, you know. it's my hope but it's too early now the, the, my hope is a, a, that from an economic point of view she but is she strong on immigration but immigration uh, is uh, the, my point is that it's just like people vote for Trump which is against their economic interest yeah. they yes, care you are about right. they care about you know evangelicals it's about abortion and yeah. then the other is about immigration so the way that they support the fascism of Trump is not about the, the, what it used to be in the 1930s and 40s that was often more about, well, it was also law and order, right? Law and order, but also social welfare. So now you remove the social welfare and it's law and order. Uh, and build a uh, wall and I add that the problem of the women is very important. Yeah. Gender, women, gay, and yeah. so on. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. This photo is very... Uh, Salvini, he does believe, is not Catholic, but uh, he thinks that uh, Catholicism is uh, a sort of... Uh, uh, is a, it, Italy is Catholic, so we have to love uh, Catholicism. But uh, be, why? Because uh, against the gender theory and so on, I think that in the immigration and the gender are uh, more important in this period than uh, economic uh, preoccupation. But isn't it ironic that, I mean, you know, you mentioned the South and the problem of uh, uh, the Mezzogiorno, but that, that was where welfare was one of the key elements of the Five Star Movement and the promise of this sort of economic betterment. Yes. But the first thing I, I did share. was destroy it. I share <laughs> so, your opinion. So I, yeah, I, I'm just, it just yeah. seems odd that I share. she might, yeah. Well, anyway. well, thank you very much. Thank you, and, and uh, sorry for my English. No, excellent.